city famous for delicious food and unique flavors. Some might be surprised to find out only one street vendor, food vendor, is allowed in the French Quarter. A decades-old decision paved the way for a monopoly of sorts, and local food vendors say the rule shuts them out of the city's most lucrative tourist areas, stifling their ability to grow and severely limiting options for hungry visitors. Here's our new investigation, starving the competition. Where are you from? Born and raised right here in the water in the Seven Wall. Dimitri Scott has cooked at some of the city's most famous restaurants, Commander's Palace, Redfish Grill, the Windsor Court. How would you describe New Orleans food? The best food in the world, and I see how I meant it. Step on up. But the food that comes out of mom and pop places like this is what he believes gives New Orleans its culinary soul. If Louisiana food is salt and pepper, we got flavor all the way down to every single bite. You know what I mean? And not necessarily a lot of spice. It's flavor. Flavor is what New Orleans is selling. That's why people fly in from all over the world to come here. But Scott says anyone who wants to sell food from a cart is shut out of the most iconic neighborhood, the French Quarter. No, that's wrong. You know what I mean? They wrong. You know, they need to be able to open the playing field up to every person in the city of New Orleans, residents, of course, and allow us to do the same thing. A city ordinance from the 1970s before Scott was even born allows only one company, Lucky Dogs, to sell food on the streets and sidewalks of the quarter. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's other smaller businesses that's, that's like myself with food trucks that are trying to be as big as Lucky Dog is. But at the end of the day, you know, there's enough out here for everybody. They can't serve everything and they can't catch every customer. So why not open it up? The ordinance from April of 1972 prevents all but one company from getting a permit to sell food on the sidewalks and street corner of the French Quarter. The ordinance says the only way to obtain a permit to be a vendor that continuously operated the same business in the French Quarter for eight or more years prior to January 1st, 1972. At that time, essentially only one company qualified, Lucky Dogs. Since then, the ordinance has never changed. Generally, you know, whether it's an ordinance or whether it's a, it's a, it's a state statute, um, there's generally a sunset clause. So in other words, the, the, the exemption runs out after a certain number of years, after 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, whatever. This seems to be an ordinance that protects this company from competition forever forever, for all eternity. Are things like this rare in politics? They're, they're so rare that they, that they almost never happen. This is maybe, you know, one case in a thousand, you might see cases like this. Newspaper articles in the 70s show the council wanted to remove peddlers and salesmen from the French Quarter streets, but that also removed a newer rival hot dog company from selling. Pluggy Dog is iconic. It's an iconic part of the city. It's, it's in literature, it's in film, et cetera. But I think if you ask the, the regular uh, person on the street, were you aware that Lucky Dog has a monopoly on the street vending business? I think they would tell you, no, we, we didn't know that. And I think if you ask them, well, wouldn't you like to see uh, a variety, a diversity of food choices, food trucks, food vendors? I'm sure they would say, or at least 95% of them would say, yeah, we'd, we'd like to have some 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 diversity, especially in a food city like New Orleans. Records show one of the owners of Lucky Dogs is a state senator who doesn't live in New Orleans. Kirk Talbot represents River Ridge. His family owns Lucky Dogs. He was a young child when the ordinance passed, but state records show he now owns a third of the company. Well, I think they would wonder why, um, if if this is uh, uh, you know if the money is being siphoned out of the city and going to a corporation where you know, the, 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 the benefactors of that corporation live in, in, in Metairie, live outside of the parish of Orleans. I think they would be concerned on that. The taxpayers would say, okay, exactly, what is the benefit? We asked the city for the amount of fees it collects from Lucky Dogs. Two and a half weeks after asking for that information, the city still hasn't turned it over. And we just don't have any competition right now. On a variety of topics in the state legislature, Talbot has touted the need of competition, saying it benefits consumers. Competition always favors the consumer because prices will go down. But when it comes to his personal business, Robert Collins of Dillard says Talbot has benefited from the exact opposite, a lack of competition. Representative Talbot is a conservative Republican. 
he's known as being pro-business, pro-free enterprise, but apparently he wants to apply those rules to everyone else, but, but he doesn't seem to want to apply the free enterprise rules to himself or his family business, so, so that's a problem. If, if he really believes in the free enterprise system, then he should have no problem, or his family business should have no problem competing in the free enterprise system with everyone else. And if he has the best hot dogs, then he shouldn't eat a monopoly. This is the kind of food they need in the French Quarter. Dimitri Scott says the lack of competition also prevents locals and tourists from tasting all of the unrivaled flavors of New Orleans. They should get a more diverse flavor because there are new items that are created. You know what I mean? There are so many new items we've taken from what all the traditional gumbo and, you know, uh, etouffee. We've done different things with that. We've made etouffee french fries. We made etouffee sausages. We've made all kind of gumbo turkey legs and stuff like that. That's more to New Orleans. He says the ordinance that has benefited one family shuts out hundreds more to the city's most lucrative tourist areas. It's a monopoly and they need to stop because it hurts that local dollar that you say that we, oh, we fight for diversity in our community and we trying to help small business. No, you're not. You're taking something from somewhere, from somebody, and it's hurting the people that's really trying to build their name, their brand, their business, and make better for their family. Talbot, a Jefferson Parish Republican, has been a frequent campaign contributor to New Orleans Democrats on the city council. Talbot, his political action committee, and Lucky Dogs have contributed to many council members over the years. Dillard's Robert Collins says the reason why the council could easily change this ordinance and open up for other street vendors in the French Quarter, like it does for the rest of the city during Mardi Gras. One vote could end a decades-long monopoly, leveling the playing field for entrepreneurs, hoping to share their flavors with tourists and locals. Let's look at it, let's talk about it, and let's, let's, let's start coming with the facts. Because one thing that the city of New Orleans is not supposed to do, whether it's the legal department or the city council or the mayor, is not be biased. And it's biased. And it may not be because this administration instilled it and put it, it's from way back in the days. So they just, they're just following it along, like, you know, hey, I'm jumping off a bridge. Hey, I'm jumping off the bridge with you too. Hey, come on, y'all, it's a, problem. It's a second line. You know what I mean? And they're just following it. It's a new day. Let's make the playing field and levelize everything for everybody across the board so everybody can win. We reached out to Kirk Talbot for a comment on this story. He declined an on-camera interview, but Lucky Dogs gave us the following statement. In 1972, the New Orleans City Council unanimously adopted an ordinance addressing the expansion of street vendors in the French Quarter in order to protect and preserve the area's historic charm, character, and economic vitality. The United States Supreme Court unanimously upheld that ordinance in 1976. In its opinion, that court noted that the council reasonably decided that Lucky Dogs and another longtime street vendor had become part of the distinctive character and charm that distinguishes the view Carre. The owners of Lucky Dogs were not involved in the debating the 1972 ordinance, and our company was not a party to the litigation that followed. We love New Orleans and cherish the fact that locals and visitors alike love our products and consider our distinctive carts and vendors an integral part of the French Quarter's unique charm. The other longtime vendor Lucky Dogs referenced to, uh, to in the statement was an ice cream vendor that also qualified back in 1972. However, that company later went out of business. One other note, Scott isn't pushing for food trucks to clog the streets of the quarter, but he says he and others would like a chance to sell from a cart like Lucky Dogs.